Hey everyone, so welcome to my course on Laplace transforms. Today we are going to talk about first shifting theorem. Okay, so let's see what does the theorem say. So theorem says, suppose if you have a function, say f of t, and suppose to this function, if you apply your Laplace operator, what do you get? You get its Laplace transform. So this is what you have suppose. Okay, if now question is, if I multiply my function with some exponential function, so that means if I do e raised to at into f of t. So if you multiply your function by exponential function, then if you apply the Laplace operator to this function, then question is what is the Laplace transform? And this is a very nice behavior. The answer to this question is you simply shift your s by a units. So simply shifting s by a units will give you the Laplace transform of this function. And that's why the name is shifting theorem. Actually, there are two shifting theorem first and second. So that's why the name first and we are shifting s by a units. That's why the shifting theorem. Okay, so this is one way of writing. Another way of writing is and this is what you see in most of the books. And uh, yeah, this is preferable. And you can also talk about the inverse. So what will be e raised to at f of t? It will be nothing but Laplace inverse of f of s minus a. So these are the two important things which one should remember. Okay, now let's go for the examples. Suppose the question is you want to find the Laplace of this function. What is the function t into e raised to 1.70? Now as soon as you see exponential function into the question, the first thing you should think of is the first shifting theorem. So there is an exponential, so yes, first shifting theorem will help you. So what you do is you ignore exponential as if now. So what is left? Left is t. So you find the Laplace of t. So what is Laplace of t? It is 1 upon s square. So by first shifting theorem, what will be Laplace of e raised to 1.70 into t? You have to simply shift your s by a units. Now what is my a over here? It is 1.7. So the answer is 1 upon s minus 1.7 the whole square. See how it easy it becomes, right? So whenever you see exponential, just think of first shifting theorem. Remove exponential, see what is left, you find its Laplace and then simply shift your s by a units. Okay, suppose if there, suppose if there is a minus sign over here, then this will become s plus 1.7 the whole square. So this is one example. Let's take two, three more examples. Again, the same thing. The question is find the Laplace of this product. So exponential is there. Okay, ignore exponential. What is there? Cos omega t. What is Laplace of cos omega t? It is s upon s square plus omega square. So now question is what will be Laplace of this? So what you do? You simply shift your s by how many units? 7 units. So this will be nothing but s minus 7 upon s minus 7 the whole square plus omega square. So that's how first shifting theorem helps you. Now let's go for the inverse questions. So you want to find Laplace inverse of 6 upon s minus 1 the whole square. So as you can see, there is a shift in s. Okay, so whatever is there with the s, you ignore that as if now. So you have what? 6 upon s square. Well, you can take out 6 outside since your Laplace and Laplace inverse are what? They are linear transformations. They are linear functions. So constant can come out. So this is nothing but 6 times Laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus 1 the whole square. Now if I ignore this a, my a is 1. If I ignore this, then whose Laplace inverse is 1 upon s square? t right because Laplace of t is 1 upon s square. So I know that 6 times I am shifting by how many a units it was s minus 1. So e raised to a t my a is 1 into 1 upon s square whose Laplace is 1 upon s square t. So the answer is 6 t e raised to t. So whenever you see shifting over there along with s you just remove that. So that will be my a so e raised to a t and see whatever is left and you find its Laplace inverse. So it's that simple. Okay, so I hope this example is clear. Let me take one more example and then I will give you some homework problems. So you need to find the Laplace inverse of s minus 6 upon s minus 1 the whole square plus 9. Now here you have s minus 1, here you have s minus 6. So what is the first step you will do? You will write down this minus 6 as minus 1 minus 5 so that I can bring this minus 1 over here. So I am splitting minus 6 as minus 1 minus 5 and then you again split your denominator. So what do you get? So this is what I have after separating the denominator. Now again Laplace inverse is a linear map. So you again separate your Laplace inverse. So what do you get is here your bracket is closed. So this is what you have after splitting the Laplace inverse because it's a linear map. Now what is Laplace inverse of this? Now as you can see here you have s minus 1, here you have s minus 1. So there is a shift in s. So therefore you have to use first shifting theorem. Now here there is a shift in s by 1 unit. So you remove that one. Don't do this in exam. Okay, don't cut in the paper. So here you remove one. So what is e raised to at? So my a was 1. So e raised to at. 
and then what is left s square up s upon s square plus 3 square and this is nothing but your cos of 3t okay so it's see whatever is left and take its laplace inverse here also minus your 5 will come outside and then here you have 3 square so what I will do, I will first adjust my 3 over here. So this is Laplace inverse of, I have just adjusted 3 over here. And then this is nothing but e raised to t into cos of 3t minus 5 by 3. And here what is this? This is nothing but it is shifted by 1 unit. So if you remove this one, this will be e raised to at. And what is left? 3 upon s square plus 3 square. And that is nothing but my sine of at. So this is what the answer is for this question. So whenever you see a shift in s, first shifting theorem. So I hope this is clear. Now let me give you some homework problems. Try to solve them and post your answer in the comment section so that everyone can verify that. So here are the four questions. The first two are on Laplace transforms. The remaining two are on Laplace inverse. So you can see the exponential, throw away exponential, find the Laplace, do the shifting. That is the hint for first two questions. For remaining two, if you observe over here, you can write this 18 as 9 plus 9 and this will become s minus 3 the whole square plus 9 and then here you have s minus 3 so try to bring s minus 3 here as well so you can take out 4 outside and then you can do the adjustment so once you have s minus 3 s minus 3 you can do that shifting theorem and uh, here also try to solve this and post the answer for each of the four questions and if you have any doubt or other than this questions where you are getting stuck you can ask me in the comment section i will answer those so I hope the first shifting theorem is clear. If you liked my lecture, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.